Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Todd Lizenby. I'm going to talk about database change management. Um, so I have about uh, five slides and then demo and then a couple slides at the end. So it's going to be mostly demo. Um, so first, so this is what we're trying to solve is, is how, you know, you have, you have a version, you have some schema, and you have lots of copies of it, and you've got to get the same changes applied consistently in all the different places. So, um, so with that problem, it sees sort of three types of solutions. I think it's useful just to talk about the solutions in general real fast. So um, the first one's a version table. And this is the, the most common solution I've seen. Uh, all the tools I'm going to demo all use this, this sort of basic method. And the, the concept here is you have some, some table in, the, in a schema, and you have change scripts and they get applied in order, and you just keep track of them in a table. So, so, one, so it's pretty straightforward. This one's, I'm calling version test. This one's a little more unusual. Um, so there was one tool called MigrateDB that used this method. Um, so basically, you, you write a, some kind of test that says, hey, check that this column exists. And then if it doesn't exist, then you have actions that we're going to go ahead and make that change. And so this is more unusual. I've used this method. There was one company I worked at, and we had a homegrown solution that would ch test for, for columns and then add, add scripts. And so uh, the thing we'd run into with that, with that was that um, you know, you'd have 90 change scripts or something, and then eventually your, your schema is modified enough that change script, you're on 91, but 45 is like, hey, this doesn't exist anymore. So you'd have to, uh, you know, things become out of date using this kind of, kind of method. So it's, I think it's less common. And then the last is some kind of diff. So you have a source, you have a target, you come up with some kind of upgrade script that'll get you there. And so a lot of the ORMs have something built in that can just go and modify things. Um, the problem with this kind of solution is it doesn't understand the difference between a, like a rename of a column and a, 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 a drop in an ad. It thinks it's the same, you know, it's the same thing. So um, there was one commercial tool called DB Maestro that was kind of more sophisticated about this, but this is more of an unusual approach, I think. So these are the, the tools I looked at. This is in the Java space. This is all the tools. These are pretty much all the tools I could find, I think. Um, and so I have the last release date, because some of these things seem like they're becoming unmaintained. And then the uh, sort of estimated downloads. Uh, this is real rough. Um, it's self-reported you know, off the websites. So, uh, but it's some kind of relative measure of popularity. So in uh, Flyway and Liquibase seem to be the, the clear leaders. Liquibase, the last, you know, the downloads was like 9,000. So it's like, it's being used. Some of these guys I didn't look at so much. They were not just under 1,000, but some of them were like 60, you know, 50. So they're kind of small tools, maybe by a, like some kind of consulting agency. And they just whip up some quick tool and, and use it with a bunch of clients. Um, so the four I'm going to talk about are a Flyway, Wikibase, DB Deploy, and DB Maintain. Um, my badass was kind of interesting. That's a, it's an ORM, but they have a, a migrations sub package, uh, and that seems like it's used a bit. It does up and down migrations, um, but it didn't seem like I don't know the the tool didn't seem exciting enough. The docs weren't good enough, or whatever to for me to cover it, but it seemed you know, like an adequate kind of tool. Um, Migrate DB, that was the, the test one where, that I showed on a couple slides back. Migrate for J was kind of interesting. It used a, like a, a Java DSL for managing SQL. So you, have, you call a create table method in Java, and you pass it column objects, and then it runs SQL. It um, doesn't look like it's being maintained anymore, though. So it, it's maybe a good thing. So, so, so for the demo, I have, I tried to set this up. So I'm going to use Hypersonic as my database. It's a, it's a Java database that is um, 
nice for demo because I can create one really fast and get rid of it really easy. Um, so, and then I just created some sort of utility code just to help with the demo. So I can, um, you know, create the databases. I can delete them. I can, uh, so I can call it delete, and all the databases are gone. And I can uh, say uh, print schema, and there's there's no schema, so it's it's empty. So that's that's sort of the the general setup. The first one I want to show is Flyway. Um, and so here's my utility code. I'm going to create my data source. This is all that it takes for integrating with Flyway. It's uh, three lines of code. And then I'm going to print out the, uh, the schema. This is just um, using the schema crawler, which is an open source library, to get some the schema metadata. And I just do a real simple print for the purposes of demo. And then all these have some kind of version table. So I'm going to print out the contents of the version table. So, um, so before adding any SQL to the project, I'm just going to go ahead and run this, and, and we'll see what happens. By the way, demo. OK. So the schema was empty, and now we have a, a schema version table that's been created. The contents of the table is down here. It's, it's empty. There's no rows in it. Um, so that was, that's the first, that was the first migration. Um, so now I have some uh, SQL scripts that I wrote. So uh, this first one, I'm going to create a table foo with a bar column. So pretty, um, pretty simple. <coughs> So now when I go and run it, let's see, uh, let's see what happens. So now my schema has got the foo table. And we go down to the, uh, the version table. And we see there was a, a version installed. And um, we can scroll over. There's lots of columns here. Um, it says when it was installed. And there's a one for this was successful. So, all right, so next I'm going to add my version 2. Uh, so do you guys think this is going to try and rerun version 1, or is it going to be smart enough to only, I hope it would be smart enough too. Yeah, so let's see. So it looks there's no errors. So version 2 created the employee table. And we have that installed. So that's cool. So now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to change version 2. Add date of birth, bar char, uh, you know, 10. So is a, when I go to run it now, what do you guys think is going to happen? Is it? It's going to either add the column, it's going to figure it out, add the column, or it's going to error, or it's not going to do anything. What do you guys think? What's up? It's going to add the column. That'd be awesome. That's exactly what we'd want it to do. So, so let's, let's, let's try it and see what happens. OK. So we go up to employee, and there's no date of birth. So we'd like it to do that, but it's not that smart, unfortunately. Um, and it didn't even error, so that's kind of annoying. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's add. Let's add another method in here. All right. So what do you think is going to happen this time? Hopefully. Yeah. So let's. Let's see. Cool. So this time it got, we got an error at least. So that's that's an improvement. And uh, it says it found differences between them, and it found it told us which script has been changed. So that's nice. So if we go back and um, print the schema real fast, we'll see that um, in this table here there's a checksum, 
This is for the script itself. So this is a nice feature. Not all the tools have this. Um, but checksum so that if someone goes and modifies it, then, um, uh, then we'll, we'll catch it. So that's a little irritating now, because what if this is just a dev system and you just want to blow stuff away and, and recreate it? So there's, a, there's another option here. Uh, flyway dot. Um, so clean on validation error. So what's going to happen this time? Hope, hopefully it drops it if there's an error. So let's, uh, let's find out. So, so that's cool. So data birth is added now. And then um, if we go and look at these uh, scripts, oops, last. Look at these scripts. Um, it looks like they were installed at the same time. So it looks like it wiped out the whole schema because <coughs> we had one error. But um, still, that's maybe nice for a dev system where you're getting your scripts ready. And then you can start to lock them down as you, as you go forward. Um, so now I'm going to move this guy back out. I'm going to add three in here. I'm going to delete all the databases. So the databases are gone. And uh, we print it. It's empty now. Um, so let's go ahead and, and, uh, and migrate. So this isn't super interesting, but we, you know, version three got installed. It was the second one uh, installed second. So that's not super interesting. But if, um, if we go add version 2 now, what do you think is going to happen? Is it going to apply version 2, or is it going to ignore it because it has an older version number? So let's, uh, let's, let's find out. So it looks like it ignored it. So that's, that's kind of unfortunate. There's another, another option, flyway.set order. So now, now we think it's probably going to do something different. And then we got some. Uh, we got a warning up here. Warning: out of order is active. What else does it say? Migration of schema public may not be reproducible. So if um, you know if these scripts are ran out of order, then no telling what the results are. Um, and we scroll down and we see it was it was ran the third script. So that's kind of cool. That's uh, again maybe nice to enable on a dev system where you want to add something extra, and then, but for you're going into production, you want to have consistent ordering, most likely. Um, so I think that's kind of a nice feature. Um, uh, I, I think also this feature could be used. Um, it seems like it, there could be some other use cases for it where on, um, you know, for setting up data or things like that, scripts you never want ran, you could be always adding them earlier into your version, and you, they only get ran when you recreate the whole thing from scratch, but uh, not, um, not as long as you're adding scripts below what version you, you care about in, in like a production system. So there might be some other kind of use case. Okay. So now we have now we have this one called Rogue DBA, which is this is some DBA that does not care about Flyaway. He's just going to go and alter the employee table and add some add a column. So um, so let's go ahead and run this and see. Uh, um, 
There it is. All right, so this, this ran and it created a create timestamp column on an employee. So I think we still have our validate. Is, uh, is validate going to catch this? What do you guys think? By the checksum, so it'd be nice if it caught it, but maybe it won't, right? So let's, let's find out. Okay, so there's no, no, error, no error messages out of order. It's still active, but no error messages. So, uh, so it didn't catch it, unfortunately. So it'd be nice if it looked at the metadata and figured out that you know, the script had changed and kept some model, but it's not that sophisticated. It's just kind of basic. Um, And the last one I want to show with Flyway is there is this um, this cool concept called Java migrations. So this is kind of cool. So. You have your SQL migrations, but you can also write a Java class with a special naming convention and a certain spot in your class path, and then it will run that along with the SQL. So this is kind of cool if you have um, data manipulation that was challenging to write in um, SQL. You could uh, spin up Java. You could call whatever kinds of functions you want. You could talk to outside systems, whatever you want to do that maybe like PL SQL or whatever can't 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 do, and um, you can run it as part of the migration, just like uh, just like um, the the SQL SQL ones. So I'll go ahead and run this. Um, so um, so I just inserted a whole bunch of rows and I printed out the table in that in that one. So that's kind of a cool feature, and this is the only tool. I found that did this, you know, or include this feature. Um, so that seems pretty nice. I really liked how um, with this one, it's just um, it's just convention. So you just drop your SQL scripts in a certain folder. You can change that lo location of that if you want to. You just put a Java class in a certain package, and it just happens automatically. So that's kind of nice. Um, anyone have questions on this one before we go to the next? Yeah. So, th so this, so there's some do and some don't. So this, these guys, their point of view is that you don't want rollback. The undoing migrations, it's uh, kind of error prone, and so they say, well, you really just want to wipe out your database and get a new copy if you need to go backwards. Um, so that's, um, and some have that point of view and some don't. This one has that point of view. Um, it's hard. I'm not. I'm not sure if. Yeah, it seems like if you're going to do the, the undo migrations, you kind of want some good testing if you're going to use it very much. Otherwise, it seems a little, um, I, I haven't used the undo myself. I'm assuming JDBC, what database would they test So um, these, these guys all work mostly with, with lots of them. Um, what's that? P pretty much, so they'll say they don't support certain ones, um, but mostly it's a big long list that they support. And then you know, I'm not going to go into it, other than you can go look, you know, if you have some particular. But a lot of them, it's a big long list. So, and that's just what they happen to advertise on their website. It probably works with more than what they advertise. So. So and like with this one, I don't think it cares too much. 
Um, you know, I think it's running the scripts that you give. So I don't, you know, if it's supported through JDBC, I think it's gonna gonna work. Um, it won't, work, you know, for that database. Yeah. Yeah. So that has to be standard enough. That's the main thing that you're gonna find the incompatibility if you're going between different databases is the version table is the the syntax the library itself using okay for your database. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so as long as you are adding always adding new scripts, then they'll get picked up automatically. Yeah. Um, so that, I guess the other thing I liked with this one too is just like this sort of simple API. It's like this is real, you know, I integrated this in a, one of our apps and it took like five minutes. Um, you know. Um, so that's nice. So the next one I want to show is um, close these guys. I want to show Liquibase. So Liquibase. So this demo is a little funkier. So the API was not as clean for Liquibase. There's some standard ways you can integrate it into your app with the API, but um, I found the the command line had the most features, and so I just kind of hack together something that will run, run it as if you're running it from the command line. A lot of these tools, they have, um, like Liquibase and Fivebolt, they have, you can run at the command line, there's some kind of API integration, there's a Maven plugin that you can use, and there's a Ant, Ant uh, like plugin or whatever that you can also use. Um, so let me show the change script first. So Liquibase is the, this is the, seems to be the dominant one in the Java space. It's one of the older ones, and then it's also one of the most used ones. Um, the chain set for this one is, I found a little funky when I first saw it, because um, I get enough XML in my life without adding any more. And so it's, it's defining create table using XML, defining columns, so um, with, and it's all in XML. So, that's a little funky. I didn't like that very much at first. There's also a syntax where you can include SQL scripts, uh, so you don't have to use the XML. But um, we'll get more of that in a second. So let's let's go ahead and um, let's delete the, everything, and then um, let's run um, let's run Liquibase. So, so here we see there was a, in the change log XML, there was three uh, scripts that were ran. And so let's print out the schema and uh, take a look. Okay, so there was a, a company table that we created. This one, it has a database change log is how they name their table. And so this is pretty similar to the other. And then this, the other one didn't have this. This one has a database change log lock. So it has a special table for creating locks. And what this is for is so if you have several instances of an app all hitting the same database, any one of them can do the migration. They'll spin up and they'll try and get a lock. They'll see, oh, there needs to be a change. They'll try and get a lock on the database. If they can get the lock, then they, that one upgrades the database. And the other ones uh, wait until the, the thing's done before trying to do anything. So that's a nice feature. So not all of them, not all the tools support clustering, but uh, Liquibase and Flyway both do. Flyway didn't have a special lock table, but um, they support it some other way. Um, and then we created a department and an employee table. And then down here is the, uh, we see the, the change log, and we see the, the lock table has one entry in it. Um, so, when I first saw the XML syntax, I thought, man, this is what a crummy tool. I was not impressed. But there's a, there's a cool feature because they're using, when they're using XML for the migrations, since it's not straight SQL, you don't have to understand everything it does. It's this, it's this uh, their custom tags. And so you, 
if there's a create table, there's a corresponding drop table that they can just automatically figure out. So it, if you're using that syntax, you can roll back uh, that change. And so we can, there's different rollbacks. This one's by account, so we're going to roll back one change. Um, And so it rolled back change three. And then we uh, print this scheme out. And the, uh, the table that was up at the top here isn't there anymore. So it got dropped. So that's kind of a cool, it's kind of a cool feature. Um, so I'm going to try out of order and see how this one see how this one does. So I'm going to re remove change set two, and I'm going to uh, delete the database. So the database is all gone, and now I'm going to I want to run the update command, run update without change two. So that should that should just work. Okay, so one and three were applied. So now I'm going to add back change two. So um, what's going to happen? So with Flyway, we had what happened. It, um, it ignored it at first, and then we said, oh, we, well, let's allow out of order. And then it worked. So hard to say. Let's, let's, let's find out. So we're going to run it, and it looks like it uh, applied change set two. So we can print the schema. We see the table got created, so we can go down to the version table and see. Um, um, so the order executed, that's that last column there. So change um, two got executed third. So that's, um, that's fortunate or unfortunate, depending on, on what you think. But um, there's not an option to enforce the order with this tool. So that's, that's interesting. Um, So, so at some companies, you tell the GBAs you want to use a tool like this, and they do not like that idea at all. They're like, I, you can do whatever you want on your dev systems, but you're not touching, touching production, right? And so that's, that's, I don't think that's uncommon. Um, so there's a cool feature for that that I like. Um, so this is the same thing again, except it's the update SQL command. So let's, um, let's go ahead and delete the whole database again. And then uh, let's run this. Um, update SQL. So it found that there's three chain sets to apply. And then what this has done is it's printed out the, uh, the SQL. So it's creating the, the change log table. It's creating the lock table. It, is, um, it has all of our SQL that was in that XML. It's generated it all. It's, it has the insert statements to the change log. So here it generated a script, and you could just hand it to DBA and say, here's the script I want you to run. And then, um, uh, and then your app didn't have to have product, you know, production access or staging access or wherever in the pipeline. It doesn't have to have access. It could. It could, but you could use these kinds of tools uh, on dev systems. Go ahead. In your experience, does this tool work well with your DBAs, or do they come back to you and say, I'm not, uh, I'm not using this crap? I mean, how ugly can this get? And have you ever had a DBA come back to you and say, So I haven't, I haven't used this one in, in prod, so I've, I've, uh, I've just done, <laughs> looked at a bunch of tools and done the re some research on them. But um, 
I have seen where DBAs do not uh, want anything ran automatically in prod. They feel much more comfortable if the script is, they're looking at the script beforehand, you're handing it to them. And so I like this feature a lot for that reason, because I, I know that you could convince them to, this you know. This is really if, important for me to embrace migration tools and being able to see the SQL yeah. it's generating. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and you. Yeah, and you really want to see it too when it's you're defining all your changes in XML. You you, you want to see what it's going to do a little bit more. It's nice, yeah. I guess, yeah speaking of knowing what it's running, um, the uh, feature for uh, the feature for If something's going wrong, yeah, yeah. So I don't think there's anything like that. So this would be the feature, probably, which is here's the script, and you can run it and babysit it and do whatever you want to uh, for that more critical place. You know, probably special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the you know and the alters in here you're saying alter this column so there's some predictability. It's, um, but yeah, yeah. This this one didn't have that feature, so it was that was just Flyway's the only one that has that, and I think it's a real nice feature because as a I'm a Java programmer, so as that's my first language, so that's nice. When if I'm doing data manipulation, I really know how to do it in Java. Yeah. I'm not familiar. I would couple this with a uh, query analyzer and a profiler before running it, and that would allow you to kind of get an idea of, uh, without making that whole change. Are you going to get to have anything more like plugging the queries? Okay. So there's also so there's also um, you can run it with ant. So here's a example ant file. Um, so you can just, you know, it has these tags, update database, and uh, the change log, and um, so I'm just going to run this one real fast. Nucleobase, um, update. So this is kind of a cool feature. So um, it's saying it doesn't understand that my temp file is a, a local database. Um, so it uh, is prompting me if I if I want to to run or not. So I can say yes. Um, and um, that's that. So I want to show. Going a little late on time here. So I want to show DB maintain real fast. There's a couple of features in this one that I thought were kind of cool. So this one, the, the API is a bit like um, it's a bit like Flyway. We're just going to update the database. There's some uh, you're rolling a bunch of properties. Um, so I'm going to let's, let's delete everything. Delete the databases. So one of the cool things with DB Maintain is it had this concept of uh, repeatable scripts. So if you, for in terms of managing your SQL, there's things you can run over and over again. Um, you can have those separate than your change scripts that are, you know, it's an alter table, you can only do it once. So, um, so I'll just run this guy real fast. And so we have our uh, scripts got ran, and then our view, which we could just recreate any time got ran. Um, and then if, uh, oops. And then if we changed it, you know, that, that view would just get recreated. So that's kind of nice. Um, Even maintain had some other interesting stuff that the others didn't have. 
Um, so there's like features. It's, you can tell it's for uh, automated testing. So there's this feature where you can uh, preserve data in tables. Uh, so you can wipe out the data in tables. You can preserve data. You can reset sequences. It came with a lot of out-of-the-box features for that. So that seemed kind of cool. It also had this uh, interesting feature. Um, so it has different kinds of runners. And so like if you're using Oracle, um, it doesn't care what kind of, you can run, the, run it through JDBC, or it can fire up SQL Plus and run it through the command line. Um, so that seemed kind of cool. Maybe there's some feature in SQL Plus that isn't available in JDBC. And so you could use that feature. Um, and this is the, the only tool that had that, that feature. So are we down to five minutes? OK. So let's show, let's show the last one real fast. Just to, and then I have a. So this one's a DB deploy. Um, so this is another ant one. This one's uh, more primitive in some ways. So like here's like creating the changelog table. You actually give it the SQL to run. So you have to come in here and initialize it and say, um, you know, um, create changelog table. Um, and so it executed create changelog table. And then you run, uh, um, update database and apply a separate step. So this one um, ran the three scripts that are available. I'll just show you. This is another one that I thought is nice. It has, it has the same feature, again, for going to production. You have an output file that you can uh, run in, in prod. And this was also one that supports undo. So it also generates the undo script for your, your change. Um, so that seemed kind of nice. Um, this one, if we go and look at the schema, you know, we'll notice there's no, uh, there's no checksum in here. So it doesn't, you change the, uh, the, the database, there's, you change your scripts after they've been ran, it's not going to catch it. So <coughs> not all of them have the same, same features. So there's kind of trade-offs with each one. I know people using this one, though, and they're totally happy with it. So some of these features don't, they're nice, but they don't, you don't have to have them. And then I have uh, two last slides. So uh, on the flyway, db.org, they have this uh, feature comparison of uh, the tools I showed, and plus other ones. So that's a this is super super awesome. I wish um, I wish more tools just did this, where they compared themselves to the other tools. It shows that they actually know the other tools exist. And then if you're creating the comparison, you get to control the conversation a little bit and say, hey, this is what I think is important in the world. And so Flyway has uh, check marks, you know, up through most of the column. So this is a nice spot to go to. To, to find out more. And then here's my comparison that, uh, that I put together for the sh tools I showed. Um, so if you have any questions, or I can just point out some things off this list. Yeah. So I guess in the last slide, I mentioned, well, liquid-based slash Java migration in comparison to Flyway and liquid-based offer Groovy migration. And I don't know Groovy, but I heard it's a superset of Java, so maybe it could be something like that. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, so the the Groovy migration framework is using liquid base under the covers. So there might be there might be extra features being added that I don't know about. Yeah. So I'm, I, anything that can be executed through JDBC, I think these guys can handle. Uh, and then with uh, DB maintain, it would actually fire up like SQL Plus if you're an Oracle. Um, you know, it can 
it can run anything, and it had a DB2 support. And it, the way it's written, you could tell in the properties file, you could write your own if you wanted to fire up some other tool. Um, so the undo, it's, you know, it's only some tools support that. And it's, it's always kind of limited, too, because it's only as good as how you wrote it. Or in LocoBase, it's as good as the changes you can define in XML. Um, I didn't talk about placeholder replacement, but some of these tools support um, placeholder replacement. So you, add, uh, you can add variables into your SQL scripts, and it will do a replacement on the scripts before running them. So that seems like kind of a cool feature. But even when that's not there, it's like you could write that yourself pretty easily. Yeah, so it's, it was real basic stuff. So it was, uh, um, you know, like replace this string with this string. Just real simple things, not uh, no templating or anything like that. Um, clean schema and clean data. So clean schema is like wipe out all the tables. Uh, and clean data is delete the data out of some of the tables. So it seemed like kind of cool features. But even when they're not there, it's like you could write, you know, it's not that hard to, to create. Um, and I like this generate scripts without running feature a lot, just because uh, I've had, I've experienced these challenges trying to get tools like this into production because people don't trust them. Yeah. Um, no, I haven't, I haven't seen anything like that. Although you could build that yourself with these. You know, like with Fileway, you could have, you could have two Fileway migrations. You could have the on startup migration, and you could have the 10 minutes after startup migration that runs that does some data cleanup or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and as far as like, yeah, you're rolling out uh, and you need some changes to happen and then the apps to update. So you'd have to redeploy the apps or you have to look at taking the tool external to your app. And so that's where they have the ant migrations. They have the Maven wrappers and things like that. So you could run stuff separate from your app too. It doesn't have to be embedded in your app. Um, so any other, any other questions? I think we got... One minute, two minutes. Um, so the native script runner that was in DB maintain, it could fire up SQL Plus, which is the command line tool that comes with Oracle, and it could execute that. So you could, you could even write your own. If there's a command line tool, you could write a runner for it that injects easily into the tool, so that you don't have to use JDBC to run to run your scripts or you can use features that are outside of JDBC. Um, and this in order, out of order execution was interesting too, because not everyone, they might have done one, but they don't all do both. So there's a couple that did both. So. Cool. Well, thanks.